Hello folks. Okay, here we are. Uh, my very first instructional video, so hopefully this goes well and hopefully this helps you. We got a 2018 Ford Super Duty here. This one's the 350. 6, 7. Uh, we want a high idle in kit installation. Um, these are actually pretty straightforward uh, once you know what you're doing. Uh, when you look at the wires, there's a lot of wiring in there and it can be a little confusing. So here we are. First things first, you have three points that you have to access. So we're going to open the hood. We're going to get over to our degas bottle here. And you're going to see we have right here is our upfitter relay box. Now this is down in clips. If you look, oh, there we go. If we look down there, we can see clips right here. You just have to pop these off and this whole box will move out of our way. Now once we move that out of our way down below, right here, there we go. You'll see this wire harness. Now this is our customer access harness that we need to access. Um, different wires obviously will be for different outfitter switches. I myself, this is our first accessory installation in this vehicle, so we are gonna do outfitter switch number one. Number one would be the brown and green wire, and we are gonna run an overlay from this brown and green wire to the other side of the vehicle. So let's go over there. So the next spot you're gonna wanna access is this side right here. Now, in here, you can see we have our pass-through wires. These pass-through wires go through the firewall and the grommet there. If you follow that wire harness right there, that'll pull them out. Now, if we get the rest of them, there we go, so we can see those are the rest of the wires, and then you have that one wire I already have hooked up. Uh, these wires right here, you can pick any wire that's good for you. Like I said, this is just the up, uh, high idle kit, so we're going to use the brown and white wire. Um, so, not hard to access once you get the harness out, um, and not that hard to hook up. It's just a matter of once you get the harness accessible. Uh, nothing has to come off there, it's just a matter of getting at that harness. Now, the third and final spot we have to access is our right hand a pillar now we get into here we pull off our cover that covers up our BM bcm also too highly recommended get rid of this cover right here there's two push pins one right here and one right there we just pull those push pins out that cover comes off that makes this a whole lot easier to access now once we get into this pillar we are looking for this customer access harness right here. Let me move my hand so you can see it. Now this is removable. You can just disconnect that and here you go. Now we will get to that shortly, but for right now we'll leave that connected. Now what you're gonna wanna do is, if you look on the back, there are numbers on the back of our big tail that actually shows you pin numbers. It starts at one, works at 211, and then 12 at the bottom over to 22. We are looking for pin seven, nine and ten so pin seven our yellow wire with green stripe that we want to go to our pass-through wires those pass-through wires again are up behind this hvac blower motor not hard to find not hard to access especially once that covers out of there you get that cover out of the way you can get to this wire harness no problem nope you're gonna pick again whichever wire you tickles your fancy you pick that wire and just match it up to the one on the firewall you can pick that wire, wire up our pin 7, yellow and green stripe, to our pass-through wires. Now, what we're going to want to also do is get our pins 9 and 10. Pin 9 is our green wire, and pin 10 is our white wire with brown stripe. Now, this is where you want to put your resistor. You get your 20k resistor, 20 kilo ohm resistor. Now doing the 20 kilo ohms, it's gonna give you approximately 1200 to 1500 RPM. As you change resistances is as you change RPMs. So what I've done is I'm just doing it crude, showing you how to hook it up, and then we're gonna wire it in properly. So right now I've got my resistor attached to our, my white, my like I said, my pin 10, pin nine. And it has a little label here too, just to let you know which one yours you're doing. But pin nine, pin 10, you install your resistor right there there you go and then what you want to do like I said let's get our yellow and green and it goes up to one of our pass-through wires I've done the brown and white wire you can do whichever ones you want so we wire that up there go to our pass-through wires 
And then, like I said, oh, let me get my light. Okay, so then like I said, we're gonna go to our brown and white and we're gonna put our overlay in. One sec. Uh, once the overlay is installed, do overlay on our brown and white and then we just get our overlay we run it across and we're going to want to hook it up to our upfitter relay one now this is our relay out or sorry upfitter output wire and this is what we're going to want to wire that up to so now i've shown you what wires we're wiring it to i'm going to pause here i'm going to wire this in properly and we'll come back shortly Okay, and we are back. So installation's been completed. Now we've hardwired everything in. So what I've done is here's our upfitter relay box. There's our harness. That's the factory OEM position is just back onto that harness there. We've got our green or brown and green wire going up. I've got wire loom on it. And what I've done is I've actually run, well, let's just, Get that all cleaned up. So what I've done is I've put little holes all along here on the top. And what we've done is we've just wire loomed it along the top. Now, a good thing that I like to do is I'll actually get the zip tie, cut it off, and then I'll actually tuck it up in behind. It just gives it that nice professional clean look. All the way across there. Now, if we go over to the other side, we're gonna see Now what I've done here, same thing, we've got our wire loom protecting the wire. We've got it coming across here. Again, I've made little inserts here. Clean it up, keep that wire loom. And I've got the wire to route around and go underneath. So now we can still access our fuse box. And what the wire loom does goes around and I was able to put that whole access, customer access into this loom. So we're all protected and good to go up there. Third and final is down here at the right hand a pillar okay so two points here folks first off before you install this hard wire into your through panel disconnect this connector and there we go take this to your bench and here is our resistor that i've installed so i've hardwired that i put in a couple some wire loom or sorry uh, heat shrink, we covered it all up, get it nice and protected, clean to good to go. So then once that's done, it's nice and easy to do that on the bench, then you can bring it in. And like you can see here, then we can do our hard wire up to our pa or, uh, pass through wires. So once that's done, you just plug that puppy in there. Now we're just going to clean that up a bit. What I'd like to do is I'd like to zip tie those wires down, just keep those out of the way so then when we put our panel back on, nothing's going to rub, everything's going to be nice and clean. So you can see that's all tucked away. We put a couple zip ties there and there, and we're good to go. Still leaves you access for your fuse box, all your connectors, and everything like that. Okay, back again. Just want to show you guys this final spot here with this customer access and the right A pillar. So, got my zip ties up, I got my harness in behind, we got the pigtail connector back where it was OEM. You can see how nice, that looks nice and clean. I got that one wire in the way for this one connector, but that's okay if you ever need to. You can just zip tie and you're good to go. Okay, let's button this up. Okay folks, here we are. We're going to test out the system, show you what happens. So here we go, we got our upfitter switches at the top here. We got our vehicle running, so you have to see, vehicle must be in park. You can't put your service brake on and your parking brake has to be engaged. So we're just gonna engage our parking brake right there. There we go, shows that it's on. We're gonna watch our RPM gauge. I'm gonna hit my switch. And away it goes. There you go. Okay, so it looks like I stand corrected. About 20,000 ohms gives you damn near exactly 1200 RPM. And that's it. That's all, folks. Let's turn that off. Let's see it. Turn it off. And done. Excellent. And a good little switch to see for safety-wise as well. We're going to turn the system back on. And what we're going to do, we're going to get it up to RPM. We're going to disengage our parking brake. 
And there you go. So now we know, oh, you know what? Here, let me just back out and show you guys that again. So parking brakes on. All right, now we're gonna engage our high idle. So now if you see, if I turn the parking brake off, and the idle kicks back down. So our safety feature is engaged, everything is working properly, and you now have a high idle kit installed into your truck. Well folks, thanks for watching. Sure hope this was helpful. 